screamed Daphne. So I won the bet. You win, Daphne. <laughs> Not bad for a girl. Here's the prize. Hey, won't, won't somebody help me? Get me down. Oh. Uh, well, well, what do you think of the performance? Pretty dramatic stuff, what? Personally, I thought it was rather crude. Yeah, I bet you'd have screamed, though. Screamed your head off. <laughs> yeah, told you. Well, that was a cracking idea. Anybody know any more? Oh, that would be lovely. No. I want more dancing. Right oh, dancing it is, and some more bubbly. <laughs> hey, Angie, I found some more bubbly in the cellar. Oh, lovely. Ah. <laughs> I'm dying of thirst. Parched. Sorry, old chap. No, that's all right. Plenty more where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fill you up, old chap. Thank you very much. Sort of big and dull. And very reliable. Do you know where I'd like to be? Now, at this moment, by the sea, sitting on a breakwater, watching that moon reflected in the waves, and dangling my toes in the water. Would you like me to drive you there? No, I'll drive you. Well, can you drive? I drove an ambulance of the war for the last few months. You're not old enough. I lied. I told them I was 18. And how old were you? 15. I put on a lot of powder and rouge. And looked absolutely ghastly. <laughs> well, can I? Well, if you promise to treat her very gently. Gently? This thing? She's a tiger. How much throttle? Um, about a third. And retard the spark. Do you know how to do that? I know. Go on, you can swing her over now. Hey, you two. Where do you think you're going? Oh, just for a spin. Going far? As far as we can. Land's End. What? Land's End? That's over 100 miles. That's right. More like two. 200. I don't think you're serious. We are. We not. are. Now, if you want to ride in a real car... <laughs> this vulgar red thing. Yours? Mine. It would be. Leave yours standing. There's a lot of horses under there, you know. Hmm, all muscle. No finesse. Geoffrey, challenge him to a race. We challenge you to a race. You're on. <laughs> Where to? Oh, I told you, to Land's End. Daphne. It's a hell of a way. Oh, so you're afraid your brand new car won't get you there then, are you? And back, non-stop, without so much as a hiccup. Well, then. I accept. Oh, well done, Billy. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll just go and bid my guests goodbye. All right. Hmm. This is a mad idea, Daphne. I know. That's why I like it. I well, don't think you're going to drive. Come on, let's go and get ready. I say, quiet, everybody. I say, this one, quiet. Oh, look, come on. Oh, look, come on. Who oh, shut her up? I say, quiet, everybody. Billy has something to tell you. What's the matter? You ought to come out and see the start of the great motor race of the year. Jeffrey and Daphne have challenged me to a race. Wow, well, exciting, isn't it? <laughs> to Land's End. Oh, oh you're bad. Can I come? No. Hey, 
Jeffrey, which route are you taking? Well, we've hardly had time to discuss it. It doesn't matter which route. The first one to swim in the Atlantic is the winner. Swim? Paddle, then. But you'll need witnesses uh, and umpires to, to, to check your times. I'll be a witness. I'll come. Good. You can take Angela as your witness, and I'll go with Billy. What? But I don't want it. Jeffrey's going with Angela. Oh, good. And I'm going with Billy. The race starts. And we finished off all the champagne. <laughs> <laughs> take any full chance. Don't worry, we'll bring you back a stick of rock. <laughs> Billy, come on! Hurry up! Right, right. Don't worry. There's plenty of time. 30 seconds! Is that what you're going to wear? Oh, what's wrong with it? Don't you like it? No, no, it's absolutely marvellous. It's just... I Start first swing.
Just keep the needle out of the red bit on the dial. Right. I want to get out. You what? I want to get out. Well, you can't. Stop the car, I feel sick. Oh, no. Yes, now. He's slowing down. He's slowing down. Aren't you going to stop? What for? Well, he might be in trouble. Do you think he'd stop for me? Yes. We're going to win this race. Cheer up, Billy. It'll soon be light. And it won't seem so bad then. Oh, no. Slow down. Slow down, can't you? It's all right, so long as I can see the road ahead. But what if there's something in the road? There's nobody around this time of day. We are? Look, slow down, for God's sake, before we're killed. I've lost the road. Can you see it? No. Look, you, you'd better stop. We'll pick it up again somewhere. Are you mad? We could be anywhere. Oh. Petrol. You didn't check it before we left? You never asked me to. Do you carry a spare can? Yes. Of course I carry a spare can. Oh. Oh, uh, I think it's empty. Oh. oh yes, it is. I, I used the last. Then you'd better take the empty can and go and find some petrol, hadn't you? But we're in the middle of nowhere. Look, Billy, we're in a race, remember? The least you can do is try. All right. All right. There's a, there's a sheer drop down there, that's what. Another few yards, we'd have gone straight over it. Well, we didn't. And the handbrake is on, firmly. So will you now go and get that petrol? Look, are you sure you know go what you're doing? Go on, hurry up. All right. All right. Stop with you, miss. 
Yes, you did. I wondered if I could help you. Not unless you can show me where there's a garage or an inn. Nothing like that hereabouts. No. Well, then you can't help me. Do it, miss. Stop you from going up there. Then up there, you see, miss. Then? But you told me there was no one up there. Well, you see, I didn't want you to go there, miss. Who is up there? If you don't tell me, I'll have to find out. No! <laughs> I'll hurt you. Get out of my way. you're trespassing. What is it you want here? But, but he attacked me. Who? Well, he was there just a moment ago. You'd better come inside. Who are you? My name's Daphne. Daphne Wells Hunter. 
You were walking on the moor? I was in a car. And your chauffeur? I was driving. By yourself? No, I had a passenger, but I've lost him. So you came here alone? Yes. What happened to your motor car? We ran out of petrol. Do you happen to have some here by any chance? No, I'm afraid I haven't. Uh, where is your car now? On the moor. Oh, excuse me, but I've been driving all night. Uh, perhaps you'd like to rest for a little while. Oh, no, I couldn't impose on you like that. At least let me offer you some tea. That would be lovely. Thank you. Aya, uh, this young lady will be staying with us for a short time. Bring her some tea and then prepare a room. A room? This moorland fog is inclined to persist, sometimes for days. Aya, uh, the tea. to keep this house rather warm. You're so used to the heat, you see. I expect you're cold anyway. Yes, I hadn't quite realized how chilled I was. Is this your wife, Mr...? Lawrence. Yes, it is. She's beautiful. Shall I be meeting her? My wife is dead. I'm sorry. But when you said we, I, I assumed... I always think of us as still being together. But I meant the Aya, my housekeeper. Aya means nurse, doesn't it? Was she your little boy's nurse? Yes, she was. He's a very good-looking little boy. Is he as handsome now that he's grown up? I have no idea. Don't you see him? No. No, I don't see him. Out! You get out! Gildy! Gildy! of mine, making violins. Do you play them? I mean, as well as make them? A little. Do you play well? <laughs> well, that's hardly for me to say. Well, you must know. Not as well as I should like, but yes, reasonably well. Are you fond of music? Yes, very.
you play beautifully. <laughs> You're very kind. Just truthful. Do you know how long you've been asleep? It must be nearly three hours. And I feel much better for it. Of course. Oh, my God, Billy. He went to get some petrol for the car hours ago. It's still very foggy. Must... But I can't just leave him there. Well, Tom can go. My God, he knows the countryside. We're surrounded by marshes here. They can be very dangerous. But how will he know where to look? He'll know, believe me. Well, if you're sure. I am. If you'll excuse me, I'll go and tell him. to the men's up. But Mrs. Lawrence is We dead. do not like strangers prying uninvited. We will speak English in front of our guest. It was my fault. I shouldn't have come This in. is God's sanctuary. You are welcome. Please understand, the Aya is completely out of touch with this 20th century. I must confess, I have difficulty in coming to terms with it myself, having lived abroad for so long. The life in India was so very different. I've asked Tom to find your friend and bring him back here. वापस आ गया है। In English, please. He is back, Tom. Is Billy with him? Shall I send him in? <gasps> well, wasn't there, sir? Wasn't there? Uh, no sign. The motor car was there, all right, but not in. I had a job to find it. The fog's still very thick. But I told him to wait. I left a message on the windscreen. I found this on the driving seat.
What does it say? Gone home, Billy. Oh, he must have got tired of waiting. Will that be all, Mr. Lawrence? Yes, that will be all. I hope that has eased your mind. Well, what do you think? Over there. I found it, don't forget. Don't forget that. You. Yeah, it's me. It was my prayers that brought it to us. He should be pleased. I prayed. And she came. Deserves all she gets, I reckon, silly cow. Not to say that. What? Oh, cow. Of oh, course, you worship cows, don't you? <laughs> Daft, I reckon. Be careful. Mm. Tell me when it's clear. No. Beautifully clear. Are these the Himalayas? Yes. We could see them from our garden. Oh, how marvellous. I can't imagine why you left. The Maharaja of Paka and his family. None of his wives, of course. He wouldn't allow them to be photographed. None of his wives? He had three, officially. He was very fond of women. He must have been. Uh, the young man standing behind him, who's he? His eldest son. Very handsome. To some. You didn't like him? He was depraved. Oh. Perverted and depraved. He corrupted my loved ones, first my wife and then my son. And afterwards she took her own life. How terrible. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be so inquisitive. I... It must be very painful for you to talk about it. The pain is there, whether I talked about it or not. You're a clergyman. I was. Look. Thousands of devout believers. Millions throughout the continent. Worshippers of Brahma, Shiva, Vishnu. See what they were willing to suffer in order to show their devotion. Now, this man has let the sun burn out his eyes just to please the will of his gods. And I thought, well, surely, surely the truth must be there somewhere to inspire such devotion. Why, surely. And I found only filth and degradation. The young Maharaja introduced me to an esoteric faith of his own. Only a very select few were invited. I, I was flattered but ignorant of what it entailed. I even persuaded Harriet to become a follower. It was her they really wanted. And then, Simon. It was vile and obscene. Oh, dear God, forgive me. There's a garage anywhere. No. This inland fog is treacherous. Can return just as quickly as it disperses. We must wait until it's completely clear. A luncheon will be served shortly. Vegetarian dishes, I'm afraid. The ayah belongs to a Hindu sect and does not touch meat. I have learned to do without it. In the meantime, if there's anything you require. The Mem Sub's bath is ready. We'll have our meal as soon as you've finished. Water will be getting cold. You 
want me to bat you? No. No, thank you. Do not be too long. Mr. Lawrence does not like to be kept waiting. How do I lock the door? There is no need. No one will come. I'm sorry. Please excuse me. That's all right. I heard the music. I find it peaceful in here. You were praying? Does that surprise you? After what you told me, yes. I lost my faith. I prayed for it to return.
You really are exhausted, my dear. Why don't you have a proper rest? Lie down in your room. Well, I really must be going. The fog is thicker, if anything. The room is ready now. Come along. I am. Thank you. No, I will help you. I'd rather not get undressed, thank you. You will use this net. Pull it like this all the way around. This house is surrounded by marshland. There are many insects, some of them dangerous. It is for your own good. Pragnasunye Shakti Oprakash Deni Valley.
Mais... You may leave now. मेरे प्रार्थना सुनिए शक्ति और प्रकाश देने वाले भगवान आज आपने ये बैठी है इसलिए मैं आभारी हूँ ये मास्क का टुकड़ा आपके लड़के के लिए है भगवान आज आपने ये बैठी है इसलिए मैं आभारी हूँ ये मास्क टूट
You say you're a relative? Well, he's... He was my brother. I'm afraid he's in a bit of a state. Not very pretty to look at. Thank you, sir. It's very upsetting, I know. Was this the only body found? The only one, sir. Well, there was a girl, there. Not when we found him. She may have got out of the car before, but I doubt that. Has the whole area been thoroughly searched? No, sir. Well, why not? Well, if you knew where the body was found, you'd understand. Well, I'd like you to show me. Very good, sir. Is it far? No, about a mile. Can we give you a lift? You know, I've never been in one of these things, sir. I... I think I'm a bit old. I think I've tried it now. So, if you'll just follow me, sir. That's where we found it. Just there. It's a wonder, though. Why? Well, this whole area is one big marshland. The uh, motor hit one of the phone places, otherwise we'd never have found it. It was used during the war by the army as a training area, but uh, they lost too many men. Like as not, that's what happened to your young lady. I'm sorry. And you intend just to give up without a search? You do the searching. Can't you organize someone, farmers, locals, anyone? You wouldn't get anyone. Not to search out there. Well, I'm going to. Well, I can't stop you, sir, but uh, I wouldn't if I was you. And you won't help me? No, sir, I won't. I can't spare the time for one thing. And for another, you're frightened. That's right. I am. If you'll take my advice. Thank you. I won't. I'm sorry about that. Good day to you, sir. Miss. We have to find her, Angela. Oh, you, you can't leave me here alone. You'll be all right. Oh, I'm cold. Well, the engine's running. That'll keep you warm. I'm frightened. Look, if anything happens, just blow the horn and I'll come back at once. All right?
hit it. On the glass in front, you hit your head. Oh, where am I, anyway? With me. But where are you for? What am I doing here? You shouldn't call me names. I'm sorry. I only bumped your head on the glass. Oh, you see, I lost my brother. Lost him? In a motor car accident. He was killed. I was nearly killed once. In the army? Yeah. Look, if you'd only let me out of here and back to the road, then I... No, miss. Hello? You're not going, miss. You're not going anywhere. Angela? Angela! How long do you intend to keep me here? So long as I feel like it. And how long do you think it'll be before someone comes looking for me? Like your brother. I was with someone. A man, an army officer. I know, I saw him. He'll soon find me. He doesn't know you're here, though, does he? Anybody home? What are you doing in my house, sir? I'll be obliged if you'll explain yourself. So finding your door open and being rather desperate for help, I'm afraid I just barge my way straight in. I'm sure you could do with a drink. I certainly could. Oh, do sit down. Just put all that stuff on the floor. I may have some good news for you. The lady you spoke of, was she tall and blonde, wearing a cream coat with a white fur collar? Oh, and buttons like that? Yes, that's her. Oh, she was sitting in this chair a few hours ago. Oh, thank God for that. She had a 
lucky escape from what she told me. But she was all right. Oh, perfectly. The young man with her was driving very badly, she said. Dangerously, in fact. She made him stop and let her get out. Well, do you know where she went after she left here? She did say London. London? Mm -hmm. If Tom, my gardener, put her onto the Moncton bus, she'd have caught the train from there. So your, your search is over. Oh, I only wish it was. I still have to find Angela. I've got money. No, you haven't. I looked. When you were out. Unconscious. I do assure you, if any stranger, yet alone an attractive young woman, comes within five miles of this area, Tom knows about it and tells me. Now, my guess is that Angela caught the same bus into Moncton as... Daphne, was it? Can't imagine Angela catching a bus. She had no alternative, I imagine. The people hereabouts are very understanding. They would have advised her. So. Well, thank you, sir, for your hospitality. And for your help. Not at all. I'm sure both your young ladies are safe now. Why don't you be nice to me? Mr. Lawrence, she knows. Just what does she know? Well, like, um, what's going on here? And how might I ask? Well, we got talking. You told her, you! Well, she wormed it out of me, Mr. Lawrence. She wormed it. You, you idiot! Sorry, Mr. Lawrence. I'm sure you are. Oh, very well, bring her up here. You're certain no one saw her? Nobody, Mr. Lawrence. Go on, then. But she is not to be hurt. Do you understand?
you, Tom? What if I am? Are you or are you not called Tom? Yes, that's better. And my car's stuck in a ditch. Will you come and give me a hand to shove it out? I'm busy. Well, you're not too busy to spare me a few minutes, are you? I've uh, got work to do. I see you're a soldier. What regiment? Why do you want to know? Well, we might have served together. We're an officer. We could still have served in the same sector. I see you keep your brasses clean. Old habits die hard, eh? You look all the same. Now, are you going to give me a hand, or do I have to go and fetch Mr. Lawrence? Thanks. I'll give you a lift back. I'd rather walk. Have you ever ridden in a car like this before? Yeah, lots of times. I understand you helped a friend of mine catch a bus from here. Not me. A young lady? No. Look, just a minute, let's get it straight. Did you or did you not help a young lady catch a bus from here yesterday? Who told you I did? Mr. Lawrence. Well, it's a bit tricky to explain. Come on, then. Come and catch me. You're the officer. You're supposed to know all the answers. Come on, come and catch Private Rawlins! <laughs> there you see, you bloody officers don't know nothing, really. You're stuck good and fast, aren't you? You'll be there forever now. You'll sink deeper and deeper until your head goes under. Nobody comes this way, ever! So don't think you're going to get saved. <laughs> Sir! I warned her. And why did you warn her? Because what would happen to her? What would happen to her? Well, she, she'd never come out. None of them ever do. Why? What happens to them? It's not me. It does it, sir. My oath. Does what? Oh, I'm sinking. Get me out, please. Does what? Well, they got something in that top room, sir. Something. 
What do you mean, a thing? Well, it can't be human, can it, sir? It eats human flesh. Your man Rawlings, is he insane? I beg your pardon. He told me that there's a... What? That there's something in this house which feeds on human flesh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I'm afraid Rawlings is the victim of his own vivid imagination, and he's not the most intelligent of them. And you're not the first person to be taken in by his, his fantasies. And mind you, in all fairness, he, he believes them himself. Every word. Is it shell shock? So he mentioned his army life, did he? He never went near the front. He was a deserter. But he also told me that he didn't go with Daphne to the bus. Now, is that a fantasy? No, for once, I, I think he was telling the truth. Your friend was a very direct and independent young lady, if I may say so. I don't think she'd suffer fools gladly. No doubt she had a, enough of Tom and went off on her own. Oh, that is only my servant at her prayers. How dare you perform the evil rites in here? Tolerate this depravity any longer. You are in the house of the Lord. I will not have it desecrated. Do you hear? Do you hear? I beg you! My son! My son is up there! I should have destroyed him years ago. But his, his dear mother made me swear. Swear not to do it! I made a vow to leave him! Leave him to me, please. No! Don't! He'll kill you! No! Oh, dear God! Noise was, don't you? Officer Jeffrey. Your boyfriend is dead. You're all alone now, aren't you? You haven't got anyone to help you now, have you? Only me. Don't touch me! to me. 
now. Father, help me.